Research and experiments in the future technology and robotics are leaving no stone unturned in innovating amazing and useful staffs. One can easily predict by seeing the advancement that life in future days will be like living in a live-action sci-fi movie. So, we're back with brand new fingertip sensitivity. Robot cubes for space exploration. Debates over banning killer robots. Public outcry over the U.S. testing robots across the Mexican border. And even the Uncanny Valley show. We've got it all and more. But before that, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe. Think you like what you see? Then also be sure to hit that bell icon while you are at it to ensure that you are notified every time we come out with a fresh new piece of content for you. That being said, let's begin. Fingertip sensitivity for robots is one of the week's highlights. A team of scientists from the Max Planck Institute for Intelligent Systems, MPIIS, introduced Insight, a robust soft haptic sensor that uses computer vision and a deep neural network to accurately estimate where objects come into contact with the sensor and how large the applied forces are in a paper published in Nature Machine Intelligence on February 23, 2002. The study endeavor is a crucial step toward robots having the same ability to sense their surroundings as humans. The fingertip sensor, like its natural counterpart, is extremely sensitive, durable, and high resolution. The soft shell, which is formed around a lightweight rigid skeleton, is used to create the thumb-shaped sensor. The skeleton supports the structure in the same way as bones support soft tissue. The shell is constructed of elastomer that has been combined with dark reflective aluminum flakes to create an opaque gray color that prevents any external light from entering. A small 160-degree fisheye camera with colorful pictures is hidden within this finger-sized cap. When a variety of things hit the center of the shell, the look of the color pattern inside the center changes. The camera sends out pictures at a high rate, necessitating the use of a deep neural network to process the information. Even the tiniest change in light in each pixel is detected by the program. The trained machine learning model can map out where the finger is sensing the item in a fraction of a second, calculate how strong the forces are, and identify the direction. The model generates a force map, as defined by scientists. Every point in a three-dimensional fingertip receives a force vector. We achieve this spectacular sensing performance with the groundbreaking mechanical design of the shell, program data collecting, the specialized imaging system inside, and breakthrough deep learning, says Jord Martius, Max Planck Research Group leader at MPIIS. This novel thumb-shaped sensor has a nail-shaped zone with a thin elastomer layer, which is one of its most notable characteristics. This palpable fovea centralis can detect even the tiniest forces in item forms. An elastomer with a thickness of 1.2 millimeters replaces the 4 millimeters present throughout the finger sensor for this super-sensitive zone. Next, researchers from the University of Pennsylvania's School of Engineering and Applied Science have discovered a solution to circumvent battery flaws. Their metal air scavenger makes advantage of a hitherto undiscovered power source that is virtually everywhere metal. Many of these robots are providing some quite astonishing skills, says James Pickle, a Penn assistant professor. As robots grow more useful, their power sources become increasingly connected to them. Pickle estimates that it will take 20 years for researchers to triple battery capacity. I'm not going to wait that long. Pickle and his colleagues describe their metal air scavenger technique in a study published earlier this year in ACS Energy Letters. The device they created basically eats metal in its environment, breaking down chemical bonds in the same way that our bodies do when we digest food for energy. Pickle explains, the major influence we took from is sort of cheesy, but it's eating animals feed to maintain their energy levels. Instead of glucose, the robot consumes metal. A thin coating of carbon cloth with a cathode embedded within is used in the present prototype. The carbon fabric breathes in oxygen from the surroundings thanks to platinum particles that function as reducing agents. A gel-like hydrogel injected with seawater functions as an electrolyte between the carbon sheet and the metal surface in question, carrying electrons between the metal and the cathode. When the hydrogel comes into contact with the metal surface, it works as the anode of a battery, allowing electrons to flow to the cathode, which subsequently powers the gadget. Varied materials provide the MAS system with different energy densities depending on a metal's oxidation potential, according to Pickle. Because of the structure of its chemical bonds, iron is abundant yet produces less energy than aluminum. Meanwhile, aluminum and zinc perform admirably as our bodies digest apples and pizza in different ways. The MAS system breaks down metal connections in diverse ways. It's becoming increasingly difficult to justify large batteries as robots have gotten smaller and smaller from dragonfly agents to hummingbird robots. Pickle's prototype is 10 times more energy-dense than high-end energy harvesters, such as solar cells, and 13 times more energy-dense than a lithium-ion battery, which means it might completely replace standard batteries in robotics. 
in unstructured contexts. Pickle's method makes the most sense. There's no reason why Roomba or a grocery store shelf scanning robot would need a new energy source because the power grid offers a consistent flow of electrons and the risks are modest. The metal air scavenger, according to Pickle, might even be helpful in space one day. The system's requirement for oxygen is a distinct limitation. Although metal is abundant, rocket boosters are used once and then discarded, Pickle explains. They are released into space and burned up. What if the surplus metal was utilized to power spaceships instead? Meanwhile, in the case of search and rescue, MAS technology has the ability to save lives. Just one return trip to replace a robot's battery could mean the difference between rescuing someone from a burning building and never seeing them again. Next, cubes, which can be controlled by robots. It's the electrovoxel that self-configures and is manufactured for space exploration. They hold a special kind of promise with their self-assembling and reconfiguration capacities. However, despite the ambitious ambition for rapid, dependable deployment in domains like space exploration, search and rescue, and shapeshifting. Yet, modular robots have been a little clumsy. They're usually based on the massive, costly building movements motto, which calls for a much-needed focus on more scalable designs, both in terms of number and scale. Electromagnetism was invoked by scientists from the MIT Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence Laboratory CSIL to avoid packing a large and costly actuator into each block. Electromagnetic fields created by the flow of electric current were used instead. Instead, they used small, affordable electromagnets implanted in the borders of the cubes. They resist and attract one another, allowing the robots to rotate around and change shape quickly. Technology frequently takes control of the world in science fiction. Should deadly robots be outlawed then? According to a UNSW Canberra military ethicist, lethal autonomous weapon systems require inspiration, but horror scenarios of the future will not become reality very soon. Killer robots conjures us visions of sci-fi scenarios in which conflicts are waged by Terminator-like forces. But according to Dean Peter Baker, a military ethicist at UNSW Canberra, it's not nearly that terrifying or dramatic. Killer robots, sometimes known as autonomous weapon systems or laws, may save lives on the battlefield. Should we ban killer robots? Associate Professor Baker's most recent book is based on his work on the International Panel for the Regulation of Autonomous Weapons. Moving on to the following entry, the study found that individuals preferred engaging with female robots. Female robots working in hotel service professions are more comfortable chatting to them than male robots. Subin CEO, a scholar at Washington State University, conducted a study. The preference was stronger when the robots were described as having more human features, according to the study, which pulled about 170 people on hypothetical service robot scenarios. The findings were published in the International Journal of Hospitality Management, an online publication. Because of current gender preconceptions regarding service jobs, people prefer to be cared for by women, according to CEO, an associate professor of hotel management at WSU's Carson Business College in Everett. As she mentioned, the gender stereotype appears to extend to robot interactions, and it's increased with more human-like robots. Even before the pandemic, the hotel sector battled with high staff turnover, and some hotels have turned to robotics and automation for several tasks, including dishwashing and cleaning, as well as customer service, such as greeting visitors and delivering baggage, according to CEO. Female humanized robots in the Mandarin Oriental Hotel in Las Vegas, or the completely automated Fly Zoo Hotel chain in China, where visitors interact with robots and artificial intelligence's AI capabilities, are just a few examples. An animatronic robot from Uncanny Valley, on stage, you might see a person sitting alone in a comfortable sweater and slacks, one leg crossed over the other, gently moving his hands and turning his head. However, the solitary former in Remini Protocol's Uncanny Valley is not human. It's a lifelike animatronic robot replica of Thomas Mell, a German author. Stephen Keeney, the show's director, has observed animatronics in museums and discovered that there wasn't enough time for what he calls the empathy mechanism to kick in but he was curious about what might happen if a robot became a performer. His goal was to make a robot's speech appear as human as feasible, not flawless, but ordinary and vulnerable. Evie Bauer, who worked on the robot's design, advised that finding a human subject and making a duplicate was the ideal approach to building something irregular and faulty. The question was, who? Keedy was intrigued by the philosophical investigation of the robot's bipolar condition. Mel, on the other hand, relished the thought of becoming a robot, 
the theater company's wardrobe crew took Mel's silicone head cast, a particularly claustrophobic procedure filmed in production. After that, they create some eerie scenes for a male robotic doppelganger. If those inner workings are seen at the back of the robot's head, the outcome is unsettling. The robot's actions are delicate and gentle. The United States testing of robotic border police dogs on the Mexican border has sparked outrage. The U.S. is testing robots along its border with Mexico in the hopes of providing mechanical reinforcements for border guards, but it has been dubbed a civil liberties disaster by a key domestic rights organization. The firm that created the dogs, Ghost Robotics, has previously shown off a four-legged robot with a sniper weapon connected to the rear. Adding to the controversy, the Department of Homeland Security DHS said this week that research and development have provided border guards with a helping hand in working with a force multiplier patrol. According to the DHS, installing quadrup mechanical reinforcements is a wise use of resources according to the region's needs. The unarmed 45-kilogram robot dog, according to Gavin Kenyally, chief operating officer of Ghost Robotics, is equipped to walk on sand, rocks, and slopes, as well as human-built surroundings like stairs. The robots were put to the test at the international border in El Paso, Texas. The dots are programmed to go on simulated sentry duty in the desert, according to DHS. With that being said, today's segment of our weekly updates comes to a close. Next time, we will bring you a more impressive bunch of news from the robotic sector. Give it a like if you enjoyed this video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel to see more of our exciting weekly updates on robotics and new technology. We'll see you in the next one. Until then, peace.